Good evening. Let me go ahead and call this regular meeting of the Rural Grande City Grilla Independent School District meeting to order. It is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. It is now 6.33 p.m. and we are at the John and Olive in Hosa Elementary Cafeteria. The same JNO in Hosa Elementary that are the ESEA 2021 Distinguished Progress Award winners. Congratulations. <laughs> Just had to throw that out there. Thank you, Mrs. Furita, and your whole staff for the hospitality. Thank you so much. For purposes to determine a quorum, let me go ahead and take roll call. Mr. Alessandro Velasquez, Jr. Present. Mr. John A. Pope, the fourth. Present. Mr. Noe Castillo. Present. Mr. Basilio D. Vargas, Jr. Present. Mr. J. Pena. Present. And myself, Eddie Ramirez, present. Let the minutes reflect that we do have a quorum to proceed. Section two, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Velasquez, will you help us with the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Thank you, Mr. Velasquez. Yes, Section three, we have the approval of minutes for the regular board meeting, which was held on January 27, 22. Do we have a motion for section three? I so move, Mr. President. There's a motion by Mr. Varela. It was second by Mr. Castillo. Sure. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Section four, public forum. I was handed a a Rogan City Independent, uh, School, Independent School District form from Dr. Arturo Montiel from the South Texas College for a South Texas College Board Appreciation. It's Dr. Montiel. Members of the board, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. On behalf of South Texas College, uh, Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, and staff, we'd like to present you with this with the STC gift, which serves as a small token of our appreciation for your ongoing commitment to our many successful partnerships. Each January, South Texas College recognizes the dedication and leadership of partnering school boards for the, for the ongoing support of dual credit programs and other partnership opportunities for students. While the ongoing pandemic has disrupted our traditional board appreciation breakfast, the college has provided small tokens of appreciation for our partnering school district board members. Within the past 20 years, your school district has been a vital partner for South Texas College and dual credit programs. And these partnerships, we can ensure that no student is left behind the education drive curve. We look forward to a continued collaboration. Um, I wanted to say that uh, Rio Grande City ISD, uh, Grui ISD, has one, one designated dual credit pathways high school and a preparatory for ECHS, all of that. But I also wanted to mention that uh, we have more graduates. We have 37 Rio Grande City through ESCISD students that earned a higher education credential in spring 2021, despite the pandemic. So we really appreciate you all's ongoing support. And uh, I believe that the word partnership is used loosely I think for those of you on the board who have a legal background understand what a partnership really means. It means that we celebrate the victories, we work hard together, however at the same time we have challenges. But the whole idea behind a partnership is we accept those challenges even though they're sometimes they're very difficult to overcome and I think with the help of the school board uh, we've been able to do that and continue. And uh, Dr. Rebecca De Leon is our new uh, Dean of um, Dual Credit. Uh, and, and partnerships, and she's done a really great job of helping us out continue. So, uh, Mr. Pena, thank you very much for your help. It's, you've been inter in instrumental in this for the board for your support. Thank you on behalf of South Texas College. Thank you, Dr. Montel. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, section five, reports and information. <clears throat> Item number one, report on Texas COVID learning acceleration supports, T-Class, uh, Ms. Soto. Uh, Ms. Soto is not here this okay. morning, uh, board president, uh, Mr. Peña, members of the board. Um, her father passed away uh, last week, so I think she's with the family. They're doing the novenas this week, so I will be taking her place. So uh, I ask you to keep her family in your prayers. For sure. Okay, Ms. Ayala, ready? 
back in, I want to say sometime last uh, spring, uh, TA came up with some COVID relief as far as learning acceleration uh, programs and supports for school districts. So initially there was, I think, 11 or 12 different uh, supports that we could apply for. So we met as a committee and we submitted our information to TA for different uh, supports and, and accelerated supports. And we were approved for, next one, Ms. Ayala? Okay. So if you look, and I think this is the most important part, um, the district awards, we got a grand total of $4,474,520,000 in grants. And if you look at the decisions, uh, each decision has a certain amount. So in direct grant funds, we got $2.4 million. Then in addition to that, that was directly paid to, by TA, we got $1.2 million in the form of either um, uh, support as far as training, uh, consumables, uh, we've been getting, uh, like for science, we were getting this program called PH Science, and so they've sent us all the equipment for that. So in consumables, in addition to getting the grant, we did get 1.2 million in direct support for those particular grants. Then we were rec recently notified that we did get Decision 11, which is after school programs. Uh, that is an additional 812,000. Uh, so Ms. Ayala, I said, add them all up. What do we look like? So in T class, it's a total of $4.4 million that are coming to our district in the form of grants that is going directly back to our students and back to our staff. So if you ask where is this money going and what is it for, uh, one of the, if you look at decision one, if you look at data strategy, we get a full-time position for someone called data fellow. We recently filled that pos position at the last board meeting. So Ms. Pat Soto, will be serving as our data fellow and as our lead on all of the grants under T-Class. So her salary will be directly taken from, from this particular position that the state saw was crucial and necessary in order for us to get back to where we were prior to the pandemic. So they allowed for those people that received decision one to hire a full-time person. So they will be funding that for the next 30 months. In decision two, high quality instructional material. Basically, they provide products, they provide training, they provide instructional material, and Ms. Ayala will be taking care of this particular award. And this one has uh, print material. When I was talking about the 1.2 million, that, that goes in that award. You know, it's just an estimated number as to the amount that they're giving us. It could be a lot more than what they're saying because last week, Warehouse called us that they received, I don't know how many pallets of just material for the upcoming uh, pilot that we have. Then we will also be getting in decision two, a math and literacy coaching positions. It's two for math and two for literacy, uh, meaning anything having to do with ELAR. So we're looking at four additional positions that TA will be funding for the next 30 months as well. And all of these, again, COVID support having to do with the learning loss. Next slide. Under decision three, uh, supplemental, again, high quality instructional material that is directly paid by TA and it's decodable text for learning uh, to read. There's also a dyslexia platform tool. Uh, I know with Ms. Ariasola, they're sending, uh, they're like backpacks, they're like packets that students can take home with all kinds of activities that, that children can use and those are consumables. They don't have to return them, they're free, the state is providing for the number, for all of our dyslexia students in the district. So we got that award and that's being paid directly by TA for all of the materials and all of the training associated with that. Under decision four is teacher recruitment support and this is the one that is going down tomorrow. <laughs> and I say going down because this is the first one that we have to submit by March 1st. We have to submit who our candidates are. So Dr. Salinas and his team will be uh, working very closely with Decision 4. And what this does, it's very similar to Grow Your Own that has existed at TA for many, many years. We were not part of it, but we are part of it now through T-Class. And what it does, it prepares people that are already working in your district in some form of capacity, working with students that either have their degree and don't have their certification or are working on their degree and have already earned 75 or more college hours and have a GPA of 2.5 or 2.7, 2.75 and have 75 hours, am I correct? So that, that particular award allows up to $18,000 for those students or candidates that are selected, of course they have to be employees of our district, so five people will be awarded up to $18,000 stipends for a period of two years to finish their certification or their degree or both. And then after they're done, there's a two-year commitment on their part 
to come back and be teachers for our district. They would be working for us two years after, but it, that's why it's called Grow Your Own. Uh, so we are looking at five positions and then one of a person who already has a degree and is in a tested area or is in a, an academic area and is just missing that certification component. So it'll give them up to 7,000, I think it is? 7,500 for that preparation work, whether it be getting them assistance, putting them through a cert an alternative certification program. Sometimes when a staff member has uh, an alternative certification program, it's very costly, and they incur those costs, well, this could be offset by that $7,500. And the same thing with the $18,000 for the other candidates, that can be anything from money for gas, money for books, money for tuition, up to $18,000 over the course of two years. So it's a really great opportunity for us as a district. It's a great opportunity for our staff. So we thought we were gonna have trouble recruiting, but that's not the case. And talking to Dr. Salinas yesterday, uh, there has been a high, high interest for that. And, and it's a great program. And we get to apply next year, hopefully we do. It, it's something that's existed for a long time. So there are just the opportunities that have existed, but now we're you know getting involved and our staff directly benefits. And of course our students, because we get to you know, grow our own teachers. So I think it's a really great program. And then if you look at Decision 6, it's Vetted Teacher Core, and what that is, it's a grant for $400,000 where the state, through curriculum, trains uh, either our own staff or we can utilize their uh, Vetted Teacher uh, Core. They have like a group of people that are already trained. So we can either use the money to train our folks and put them through modules, or we can hire teachers that have already been trained and they can do teaching or tutoring virtually. So that is $400,000 just for that. And then, of course, Decision 11, we just received that. I want to say right before we let out for uh, our break, I think it was in December, we received the decision. And this is $812,000 for a uh, program for high-quality instructional uh, support. And this is as a result of 4545. For any student who failed the STAR in the spring or maybe is not on grade level, the state requires that they engage in, 45, in, in um, tutorial to get them to pass the STAR. So if they failed, they have to engage in this. So what this is doing, it's providing us training. It's also providing money for us to hire a person to run the high quality instructional material after school. So what we will be doing is we have to implement by the fall. So our idea is to uh, probably advertise in the summer and then get going by the fall. The, all of the awards that we've talked about today uh, start from, from January, it's 30 months. So we have the money for 30 months beginning on January 1st. So that's how long it's going to take for us to, and I think that's probably the most important part of the, of the presentation is the money that's coming to our district, what is it for, and of course everything, there's different slides to explain uh, the information. Do you all have any questions about T-Class? That seems like a lot of money. Yeah. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of responsibility, and it's, it's, it's like I told Ms. Ayala, it's a, it's a great responsibility, but with anything, there is a lot of meetings, there's a lot of things that we have to adhere to, so, but there are great opportunities for our staff and, and for our, our students. Our students are gonna be the ones that will directly benefit from this, so. You know, we, we took advantage of everything that we could apply for that we thought, and there was some we didn't get, and you know, Mr. Peña's like, call and find out we, we didn't get this one. And it was because we already had, like we, the one we wanted was a PTIC, and they said, well, you already have an early college, so. You know, we're looking for people that don't have anything, so we scored lower on the point system, but, you know, if it's out there, we're applying. I know that Dr. Salinas and I worked on one last week to support beginner teachers, so we submitted our name, and hopefully we get that, and that's another $150,000 for human growth and, like, investing in human capital, which is, I think, crucial at this point, so. Worst case, they'll say no. That's not right? That's, what we, that's, what, that's <laughs> the way we look at it. I always tell say, look, we didn't have it before, so why not? Exactly. Why not? We, you, you don't lose anything. Yeah. All right. No further questions? Great job. All right. Thank you so very much, Mariel Morris. Thank you. Item number two, report of National School Counseling Week and recognition of Rogan City Grua ISD counselors. Mr. Rick Solis. <coughs> Ms. Olivar. Ms. Escobedo. Good evening, Board President, Mr. Ramirez, members of the board, the Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Adolfo Peña, Jr. Uh, my name is uh, Ricardo Solis, I'm the Executive Director for Guidance and Counseling, and uh, this month we get together for February to honor all our counselors and our counseling staff that pay such a good impact and a tremendous impact on all our students. It is through their efforts, their dedications, and their sacrifice that we honor them and we thank them each and every day that goes well beyond their job description. 
You know, these years have been very difficult, you know, and unique for them. And, you know, we've come together so much through teamwork. And by teamwork, I, I rarely, I mean the fact that, you know, our fantastic principals, our directors and our administration, and of course our school board, the support that have been given through us and the understanding has been, uh, you know, outstanding. And for that, we do want to thank each and every one of them because it is a team that has to move forward and to be able to thank all our individuals. Yes, well. We just want to take this opportunity to thank our counselors. I know they've stepped up for uh, all their calls that we've uh, put on them. I know uh, this, these past times, uh, they've been called above and beyond, and they have you know, performed above and beyond their duty, like Mr. Solis said. So with all the changes that legislation has brought up, I think uh, they've, they've met those challenges. And you, with your support, we've been able to make sure that we're meeting those challenges. So I'd like to thank you, just like I would like to thank our counselors. And it's not just that week that gets dedicated for National Counselors Week. It's all the time. They're, those, those, they're the heart of a campus. That's basically what they are. And they've stepped up to the plate. Good evening. And so this year's theme for School Counseling Week was Better Together. And I think that our counselors have done such a good job in showing that, you know, anything can get done when we work together. And, and like Ms. Escobedo, Mr. Solis said, with the help of everybody and the support of especially you all and, and Mr. Peña, it has really, you know, been very successful. So thank you. Okay, thank you to our counselors. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. So at this moment, we're going to be handing out some certificates to our counselors, and uh, they're going to be going on stage to take photographs, of course, with our board member, Mr. Benny, as well. Uh, I don't know if you do want to do it individually, if you all want to help out, pass out the certificates to them. You all, uh, yeah, on the, on the stage. Right in the middle. All right, so to all of our uh, wonderful counselors, we're going to be calling you all uh, individually, so if you all want to go up through that side where Lily's walking up. And we're going to go ahead and start off with me getting my glasses. With Miss Arlene Saldania. It's okay, you can, you can clap, you can clap, yes, of course. <laughs> Ms. Arlene Saldana from General Sanchez Elementary. <laughs> Next we have Ileana Villarreal from Roque Guerra Elementary. Mrs. Maricela Garcia from Alberto and Celia Barret Elementary. Mr. Orlando Guerra from Roque Guerra Elementary. Ms. Veronica Martinez from La Unión Elementary. Mr. Aldo Solis from John and Olive Elementary. We knew very well he was going to get the biggest applause, of course. Very well deserved for all of you. Ms. Mariela Adame from Gruya Middle School. Mrs. Lily Alvarez from Rio High School. Ms. Eloisa Alvarez from Rio High School. Ms. Roxanne Acevedo from Rio High School. If we can have all the counselors not sit down yet, we want all the counselors that we're having stay up on stage. At the very end, we're going to get one group picture. 
Miss Rosie Chapa from Rio High School. Miss Ashley Mills from Rio High School. Mr. Abel Laurel from Gruya High School. Miss Leonor Rodriguez from Gruya High School. Miss Ileana Navarro from Gruya High School. Miss Daniela Almaraz from Gruya High School. Mr. Sebastian Doherty from Gurria High School. And Ms. Elma Compian, our LPC. Take another one, Rudy. And of course, there are several counselors that uh, could not make it this evening, but of course, they deserve all the recognition nonetheless. So once again, to everybody here in the audience, especially our John and Olive in Jose Elementary, we can have one tremendous round of applause for all of our counselors throughout our district. All right, that's the end of them. So if we can have all of our counselors get on the stage. If we can have all of our counselors get on the stage. Rudy, John's posing over there. Yeah, if all the counselors get on stage, we'll uh, try to do our best to find a window. We see you, Mr. Pena. Just like they do when we were doing our class photos, guys. Find a window. If you cannot see Rudy, he cannot see you. Please find a window. We cannot see Mr. Velasquez over there. There it is. We can definitely see Mr. Pope. I mean, Mr. Pope doesn't, you know, see him wherever. Mr. Pena. Oh. Jay, your window's closed, Jay. I mean, you, you. there it is. Sneak a peek, Jay.
Mr. Castillo, we can't hardly see you, Mr. Castillo. Good point, Mr. Ramirez. Good point. There we go. Make sure you count, Rudy. My, Mr. Pena, have you grown? All right, here we go, guys. There we go. Let's, uh, <clears throat> Esther. All right, here we go, guys. Count, Rudy. All right, tremendous job by our counselors. Once again, to all of our counselors, and of course, to all of our counseling administrators, Mr. Solis, Mrs. Escobedo, Ms. Olivares, thank you for the wonderful do, uh, job that you all perform every single day at our campuses. All right, item three, report of the National Association of ESEA State Program Administrators and recognition of John and Olive in Ojosa Elementary 2021 Distinguished Progress Award Category 2. Mr. President, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, Superintendent, Mr. Pena, um, what we're going to do, uh, we've already individually recognized uh, the staff, but we wanted to share a video that was uh, created uh, by our district um, and share also with you that we just got back from New Orleans where uh, we were recognized. John and Olive Hinojosa was recognized. Um, there's a couple of pictures from the um, convention. We're going to show a short video and then we're going to ask all the members to come up and take a picture with you all with their banner if that's okay. Very well. Yes, all of right. course. Let's begin. Hello. My name is Oneida Zurita and I am the principal for John and Olive Hinojosa Elementary in Rio Grande City, Texas. At John and Olive Hinojosa Elementary, we take pride in everything we do. Our campus was built in 1990 and has proudly served a 100% Hispanic community. Our demographics consists of 98% economically disadvantaged students, 99% at-risk students, and 93% bilingual students. We have a very successful UIL team, an outstanding student council group, and have received a TEA Purple Star designation, and we have been identified as a Gold Ribbon School. Our teachers go above and beyond to ensure every student is successful. Creating a positive change requires time, consistency, and willingness to serve. At John and Olive Hinojosa, building a safe and positive school environment that promotes learning are conditions that have been created throughout the years. We have successful students because we have dedicated teachers that believe in their students. 
The culture we have created here is where students, staff, and parents are proud to be a part of. Let me just uh, inform you that this is a very prestigious honor. Um, amongst 70,000 schools in the United States, 7,900 in the state of Texas, our John and Olive Hinojosa was selected by our, uh, uh, the Commissioner for Education. And so this is a really, really big deal. And they've done it for two consecutive years. And I know that moving forward, they're gonna continue. Their passion is incredible. I got to spend some time with the teachers and the principals. I'd like to call upon uh, Ms. Marisa Saldivar, if you could come up to the front. Marco Olivares, and of course, Oneida Surita. These three principals were instrumental in uh, the reason why John and Olive Hinojosa got selected. Remember that these three principals sustained the level of excellence in this campus. The amount of underprivileged students that are here has proven that the will, the pride, the consistency pays off. And let me just give you another side note. When Marisa Saldivar was the principal, she received an A rating on, on, in this campus. She was one of the schools, or the only school, who spent the least amount of money in tutorials. She was the one sitting in the hallway with the students, tutoring students. This is how special this school is. This is how special these three principals are. And this is how special these teachers are. Teachers, please stand. Thank you. TEA will be arriving early spring to present them with their uh, plaque um, and a video that they created as well uh, to present to Ms. Surita and uh, the staff. But again, um, I, I tell everybody I, I want more uh, recognition. I told Ms. Surita, I, wanna, I want the billboard to show you know, this accomplishment. It's a, it's a really, really big deal. And I, I am so proud as a Title I uh, representative. This used to be the Title I uh, Distinguished Award in the past. It is now ECSA, and so ECEA. And now um, the nation has recognized this as being one of the campuses in, in the United States as supreme, as the best. And so again, big honor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to, to this school, for us, for the leaders, for the community of this, of this school. So again, congratulations to all three of you and of course this wonderful staff and we're ready now to take a picture. Right. On behalf of our school board, you know, trustees here and ourselves, central office, we're super proud of the campus. You know, the effort that y'all put forth every single day. Every time I visit the campus, I get chills. You know, just seeing you all working with our students throughout day in and day out. So this acknowledgement is, is huge. So we congratulate each and every one of you for the wonderful job that you do every single day. Uh, you know, rain or shine, you're here 100%. Last January, you came back strong to help our students, even though, you know, we're just uh, going through the pandemic. So congratulations. And, uh, you know, we've been brainstorming. Uh, we think that we should have a parade around the community to celebrate this huge success. So we'll continue to celebrate uh, this huge, uh, outstanding success throughout. That's what I was going to go with. I said, we agree with you 100%, so we're not done yet. Nope. We're not done yet. Nope. So, <laughs> all right. Picture, right? Can I stand on the box again? <laughs> Up here? Or down here? Up here? On the mic. I know we joked around about each one of you taking your own chairs. But uh, let's see how we can uh, squeeze in, in the, on the stage.
All right, let's see who we can't see. Stand on your tippy toes if we have to, just for a couple of seconds. All right, here you go, guys. They're counting already. Ready? Thank you very much once again to John and Olive in Jose Elementary. All right, uh, before we proceed to item four, uh, Mr. Osuna, let me, I was provided with a list of acknowledgements and there's no better feeling as a board than when you're bombarded with recognition and awards and wins and victories. And so bear with me, but I was provided a list of acknowledgements here. Uh, and I'll start with the Rural Grand City High School TMEA All-State Band members consisting of Maria Garza, Daniela Garcia, and Dennis Gonzalez. 
Through high school ATSSB All-State Band members, consisting of Kayleen Salas, Leonel Flores, Daniela Diaz, Christian Garcia, and Jorge Palacios. Rurgan City High School Mariachi Cascabel and the Gruya High School Mariachi Gruya de Plata each earned a Division I at the UIL High School Mariachi competition, making them, them state qualifiers. Gruya High School Mariachi Gruya de Plata became the 2022-40 Mariachi TME state champions for the 10th time in a row. Athletics, we have Ray N. Cortinas, who signed to play volleyball at Dallas College in Eastfield. The Gruya Boys Girls Wrestling, they advanced four to regional meet in Austin. Real Boys Girls Wrestling, the girls 16-5-8 back-to-back champions. There were a total of 21 boys slash girls that advanced to regional meet. The boys play, uh, placed fifth overall and eight advanced to state. Real Girls Basketball, back-to-back uh, -back 30, uh, 35-8 champions. They're by district champs and played one heck of a game, came up short, two points short in the area championship game. Real Boys Basketball, uh, have had consecutive playoff appearances in the last three or four years. And then we also have the Battle of the Books District winners, Elementary Division Academy for Academic Excellence Elementary, Gurea Middle School for the Middle School Division, and Rogandi High School for the High School Division. So it's a lot, but I felt it was extremely worth noting. When I get lists like this, I take the time to acknowledge it because there's so many and sometimes we forget. This isn't even all encompassing, but this, I, I welcome more lists like this. Give them to me and I'll try to acknowledge them and read them off as, as best I can because they deserve all the recognition in the world. I see Coach Pratt, Ray Ramirez is here. So many people deserving of, of so much. So again, just the little acknowledgement of what, what has been given and most of these just happened a few days ago, not too long ago. So congratulations to all of them. Thank you all so much. <laughs> on that note, I think you'll cover some of it too, but it's uh, item four, update on students, staff highlights. Good evening, Mr. President, Mr. Benia, distinguished members of our board, everyone joining us here at John and Olive Elementary, everyone watching us live from the comfort of your own homes on this chilly, actually suddenly chilly evening. It is a uh, tremendous pleasure that we have to present every month all of the wonderful, and you know what, I mean that word with every sense of the word, wonderful, dare I say sensational accomplishments and accolades that our students, staff, administrators, and every single department gets on a monthly basis. We get to show it to you all. January was no exception. So now allow us to show you some of the highlights, like Mr. Ramirez just said. We can't, of course, cover them all because there's just so many, but that's a wonderful problem to have in our district. But here are some of the highlights from January, and we can't wait to show you February has in store for next month. At Real Grand City Gurria ISD, we aim for excellence in every aspect of school life. January was School Board Appreciation Month and Real Grand City Gurria ISD celebrated and thanked our sensational Board of Trustees for everything they do for our district. Mr. Gocha Ramirez, Star County District Attorney, educated our middle school and high school students about the health and legal consequences of vaping. Our sensational Superintendent, Mr. Adolfo Peña Jr., hosted a special surprise breakfast for our Gurria High School and Real Grand City High School boys and girls basketball teams. Ms. Yasmin Alvarez's pre-K-4 class from Roque Guerra Jr. Elementary became the top class in our district for most usage in the Ready Rosie program. The bilingual education, ESL, and early childhood departments recognized the schools who had the most usage and most games in the Summit K-12, Imagine Learning, and Lexia Core 5 programs. The Rio Grande City High School Mariachi Cascabel and the Gruya High School Mariachi Gruya de Plata each earned a Division I at the UIL High School Mariachi competition, making them state qualifiers. Mr. Ray Ramirez, RGCG ISD Athletic Director, was presented as the Athletic Director for the year of the 36th Annual City of Palms Football Clinic. Our Rio Grande City Gruya ISD students, teachers, and administration celebrated the 100th day of school with festive and creative attire, decorations, and surprise treats. RGCG ISD showed their appreciation for all of our law enforcement officers and security guards for National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. The Bilingual and Family Education Department held a Title III Parent Virtual Academy with Dr. E.T., who is a renowned author, educator, and bilingual advocate. At Rio Grande City Gruya ISD, we strive to give you, our students and our staff, an experience of a lifetime. Item 5, report on construction projects. 
Once again, here's uh, this month's updates on some of our projects that we have ongoing at the Fort and at various campuses. Rio Grande City, Gria ISD is excited to share how some of our projects and renovations are progressing. These projects and renovations range from items that were voted on in the bond election to other much needed improvements in our district. Gria High School has updated their putting green with a specialized turf that allows golf balls to roll true and will begin updates on the driving range for our Gator golf students in the upcoming weeks. Plans for the new Gruya Middle School facilities are underway as crews have begun clearing the area for the new location. Very soon we will start to see construction for the new home of our mighty Gruya Middle School cranes. Plans for the multi-purpose center and staff development facilities are in the process of being created with input from district personnel and we have started to bid out contractors for these projects and are excited to see the process. We are continuing to work on drainage at Fort Ringgold as well as making sure our drains are being cleaned and handled properly. Stay tuned for more updates on current and future projects and remember at RGCGISD we are working for you, our students and our staff to create an experience of a lifetime. Thank you. I think that does, that does it for reports and information. We'll proceed to section six, recommending approving the consent agenda. The board has agreed to discuss the following items, all the items below that are not called out will be approved by consent. We have consent agenda item number one, consider and take possible action on donations to Rural Grande City Gruya ISD. Do we have a motion or, or discussion on item one? Mr. President, I move that we approve the consent uh, agenda, which would be item one and item two. There's a motion by Mr. Vera. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Penny. Is there any discussion required? <laughs> Mr. President, it would be nice to whoever gave us donations if, if they could be basically acknowledged, I guess, who they are. That is very good, yeah. Good point, Mr. Gartiel. Who would? Mr. Pena, who would? That would be on item one. I think that we have two donations that we're acknowledging here. Okay. Uh, one is for the Rio Grande City High School girls track. Uh, it was donated on uh, February 1st of 2022 in the amount of uh, $2,495.90 from uh, Snap Mobile Inc. And then another uh, donation here that stands out, it's for the RGCGISD Superintendent Golf Tournament 1. The golf tournament, sorry, it's for $3,000. It was a barbecue pit on April 11th, and that was from Encarnacion Chonito Signs. So that's something to, to point out, if we could. He does that every single year. Yeah. It would be nice to send them a letter of appreciation for, for their donations. Yes, sir. All right, so any discussion required for further discussion on item one or two? There being none, all those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Action items, action item number three, consider and take possible action on request for use of school facilities from Stark County Fair Association to host a dinner honoring the Stark County Fair Scholarship Honorees Middle School Library. I will point out that there was some scheduling. I know that the board meeting uh, was moved, so this has already occurred. But for purposes of thoroughness, we do have to uh, move on the motion. So do I have a motion on item three? Mr. President, I move that we approve item three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, and 10 is presented in our board package. There's a motion by Mr. Batel to approve items 3 through 10. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. No. Second by Mr. Pena. Is there any discussion required on any particular item? No. There being none, all those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign. Motion carries. Item 11, consider take possible action on pay application number 2 for payment to headless construction on synthetic turf softball and baseball fields. Do you have a motion or any discussion on item 11? Mr. President, I move that we approve item 11, 12, and 13 
with the addendum that was presented to us. There's a motion by Mr. Vadial. Is there a second to that motion? A second that motion. Second by Mr. Peña. Any, dis any discussion required on any particular item? First of all, let me just, I, the only thing I want to say, baseball fields and softball fields are, look beautiful. I just wanted to know on the putting greens, where are we at with the putting greens? Because I've been asked that, and uh, that's about it. Uh, fields are, I've just gotten a lot of compliments on those fields. Mr. Ramirez. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. The status of the putting greens, I spoke to the lady uh, this afternoon, and she stated that they'll be here next week uh, to apply the uh, turf at the Ringo Middle School putting green. And they're supposed to come back tomorrow for that gruya. They're supposed to stretch the, the carpet. That's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of bumps that we noticed there, so we call them back to come and fix that and add some uh, sand to be able to weigh it down. Uh, but because of the weather, they might have to delay till next week, but yeah. uh, they'll be here next week. Are the baseball fields, softball fields already done? Sir? Yes, sir. They're 100% complete. They're, they're beautiful. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Are there being none? All those in favor, so signified by raising your right hand. Same sign. Motion carries. Item 14, consider and take possible action on awarding of the following. We have RFP number 22-29, E-rate 25, category 2. It should read funding year 2022. And then we have bid number 22-31, uh, two US used semi-tractor trucks, one for real high school and one for dual high school. Mr. President, I move that we approve item 14 as presented with some questions. There's a motion by Mr. Varial. Is there a second to that motion? So second by Mr. by Mr. Castillo, Mr. Varial, you can proceed with discussion. Yeah, on the on the RFP for E-rate, how much are we applying for, and exactly what are we getting on the E-rate, if I could ask? Mr. Sainz. Uh, we actually broke it down into uh, three parts. One being the switches at all our campuses, then our NOC, which is our network operating center, which is at the multipurpose center and then our firewall, which protects the district from anything bad coming into the district. On the firewall, uh, we, the current one that we have is seven years old. It's kind of end of life, so we needed to replace it. The thing about E-Rate on this item is E-Rate covers 45% of that item, and the district has to cover 55%. Uh, That's why on, on the breakdown that you, that you have before you, you see E-rate, and then you see non-E-rate. Uh, on the awards, uh, Ms. Sita has the, uh, the cost of uh, each of the items. Uh, the switches came out to 914867 The NOC, the N Network Operating System, came out to 28000 That's replacing all the network equipment at the MPC. That also is about five years old. And of course, the firewall at 100000 Total request is a million forty-three thousand seven twenty-four. Our district share is the share. Share. Our district share is two hundred three thousand five hundred three. Uh, that is our fifteen percent. That is uh, that is due from our part if we get awarded, and that will be coming from the general fund. This is a refresh that we do every three to four years, so we can get the latest and greatest. There's there's a total of one hundred and seventy-one switches that we're going to replace district wide. We had already discussed the Aruba switches, right, and all that? The, the Arubas say. were our wireless access points. And, then, uh -huh. and, and now these are our switches. They're, they're Cisco gear, top of the line. Uh, we, we call it POE++. And uh, it's, it's going to be state of the art. Mr. Science, just one quick question. I've been here for a while. It seems that every time E-Rate, it's always switches, switches, switches. Those switches always have to get replaced. I mean, we've been talking about switches forever and a day. If I can right. Remember. So we, we get to a point, actually, in our district, we have 380 switches. Okay. We're replacing 171 with, P right now, the, out of the 380, uh, 210 uh, are POE plus. The plus plus gives what, us a little POE's, extra. What, is, what does the POE stand for? Uh, what does a plus plus stand for? It's a power over Ethernet. Okay. So basically what that does is our... Wireless access point requires power. Instead of you no know, plugging in directly to a uh, plug, to an electrical plug, we put it through the network. And if the, the switch is a POE uh, switch, it provides power via a, a category six uh, connection. Instead of running electrical to every single switch, every single access point, the switch takes care of all that. So next question. I know that the federal government requires that we get three quotes. Did yes. We get three quotes? Yes, on, under, uh, under E-rate, if we get one quote, that's sufficient. 
Reason being, when we apply uh, our when we do our form 470, which are our application, it's on the web. The thing about Rio Grande, unfortunately, is we're rural. Not too many uh, businesses want to come down to South Texas and do business with us. The ones that proposed uh, pricing, one is in uh, McAllen, one is in Edinburgh, and the other one is in San Antonio. So uh, we have trouble with companies wanting to bid in South Texas, and that's always been the case. So E-rate so e only requires one bid? If we only get one bid, it's sufficient. If we get no bids, we can actually solicit a company. Uh, example, uh, if we didn't get any bids, Grandy Butane, can you do our work? That would suffice. Let so, me add, because I know federal requirements are three bids, correct? Yes. So it's, it's circumvented, correct? Well, we, we did get three proposals. Oh, we did? We did get okay. three proposals. Okay. Uh, the only thing is, one of the companies only bid on one item out of the three, but we did have three. We had Intech Southwest out of San Antonio, uh, Barcom Technologies out of uh, West Echo, and NetSync uh, Services out of McAllen. So we did get three proposals. Intech Southwest only submitted a bid on the firewall. Uh -huh. So we had a committee, and instead of uh, breaking it down into components, three components, we decided to do one uh, award. That way, we don't have finger pointing. No, if we have an issue with a firewall and we awarded it to a different company, then we would have, uh, no, it's your knock that's creating the problems. No, it's your switch that's creating the problem. No, it's a firewall that's creating a problem. Here, we have one company that will take care of all three components. And it is low bid. All of them were low bid. Any further discussion? Right. There was a motion by Mr. Verratti, was seconded by Mr. Castillo. One, one, one more discussion. Go ahead, yes. Those trucks, uh, uh, are those for the ban? Is anybody on those trucks, are, those, are they the ones that we want for the Rio Grande City and the Gruya ban? Yes, sir. That, that is, is correct. The one. Yes. one for each. One for Gruya and one for Rio. How so much did the, the, those cost after all? On the, the lowest bid one was $29,909.25, and that's each. Both of them from that company, which was Rotex, okay. um, both bid on that one. They were 2014s. One had 278,000 miles, and I believe the other one had 280,000 miles, and our mechanic did go up and to go and see them. Do you know we already ordered the trailers? Uh, I believe so, yes. The PO was already um, out. That is correct. Yeah. So we should have 18 wheelers hauling stuff for next year for the bands, correct? Yes, sir. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. All right, there being no further discussion, all those in favor so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Item 15, consider and take possible action on geotechnical engineering services for the RGCG ISD faculty student training center addition and rehab. Mr. President, I move that we approve item 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 as presented with, with some discussion. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Varial to approve items 15 through 19. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Peña. Uh, you want to proceed with discussion, Mr. Varial? Just on the geotechnical, if somebody could give us a, what that means or give us... Uh, Mr. Lopez or Cita? Mr. Garza. Uh, Delfino, too. I guess I can start off, Ms. Jimenez, and you can finish it up. Okay. Uh, it is required uh, before we make, uh, you know, some buildings or go into construction for us to so uh, test the soil. So here we're asking permission. We do have a quote uh, from, you know, geo uh, technical engineering, and uh, we would like to have that approved tonight so that they can start the uh, testing here at the multipurpose area, sir. The only question I really had is what is a student training center? What is it? Okay, that's the addition to the multipurpose, sir. Okay. In our plans, we okay. have. That's fine. I understand now. Yes. Okay. That's the only question I really had. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All right. There being none, all those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign. Motion carries. Item 20, <coughs> consider and take possible action on updating DMB exhibit T-test approved list of appraisers. Do you have a motion or any discussion on item 20? Mr. President, I move that we approve item 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Varela to approve items 20 through 24. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Peña. Is there any discussion required? 
Just on item 24, I know we're purchasing laptops and iPads for student use. Are we going to? Uh, yes, I miss how, how are we going to? Uh, are they for the high schools, middle schools, elementaries, uh, all, all? And how are we going to? Who's going to be in charge of them? Library, uh, librarians, or things of that nature? Good evening, uh, members of the board, Mr. Pena. Uh, yes, uh, this. Oh, my voice is too loud. Um, these laptops are for student use. They will be distributed like just like all other laptops through the libraries. And they, so far, we have a plan to distribute evenly among the schools as they need. Um, and, and we still have a need. We have um, a large number of, of laptops that are broken that need to be replaced. We have a small number of them that are older that also need to be replaced, and this, that's the purpose for this one. What specifically are laptops and iPads used for in schools? Can I? For the, right now, we have what is called blended instruction. So the students do or the, the instruction. A lot of it is done in person, but a, some of it and the assignments and all that are done through the computer. So that, that is the main use for them. Okay. For in-class in instruction? For in-class instruction, correct. For what? In-class in in class class instruction. instruction. Okay. And the age group, I didn't catch that one. What, what, what's the age group of the students on these? And this one, these are regular size laptop. So we're speaking third grade through all the way to seniors, to 12th grade. Yeah, cause some of them are, are Apple over there. Some the iPads are, are specifically for pre-kinder three and four. So uh, it, we are purchasing 100 iPads and 416 laptops. So the unit price of 300. All right, any reasoning behind the, the, the iPads over, say, like the Samsung ones? I know some are like a little bit better priced, right? Well, we already started buying la iPads for the pre-kinder. This is to complete uh, every student. So we started, we, ha we bought uh, 550 iPads previously, and this is... This is to make them uniform, I guess. Correct, right? so that all the students have the same device. Although I'll, I'll admit the Apple products do last a lot longer. Yes. yes. No, I've and, got, we, yeah. and we're buying the proper casing for them too and the protection and all that. So yeah. they no, do last. Yeah, no they joke. Do. I've got a, a laptop that's been working since 2011. We'll, we'll disregard the endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> that is not an endorsement. But I know it's a fantastic product. But yeah. Right. Okay. Any further discussion? All, right. all those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same Thank sign. You. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Item 25, consider and take possible action on renewal of power school enterprise management service known as EMS. The motion any discussion on item 25. Mr. President, I move that we approve item 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 as presented in our board packet. There's a motion by Mr. Barriad. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Mr. Castillo. Is there any discussion required on any of those items? One, one quick discussion. I know sure. we, on those canopies, Mr. Ramirez. Item 30. When, item I know we don't have any canopies because the ones we they built didn't weren't good. Uh, are these going to be done during the baseball season, after the baseball season, or on weekends, or what's the plan of action? Yes, sir, I've been in communication with both companies a minute and a bit, and uh, they advised me that they do have the material uh, in warehouse. So as soon as we approve this item, they'll be ready to go within the next ten days. Okay. So how long? What's what's the project? Uh, we'll coordinate uh, possibly before spring break. Uh, right now, I think our teams are going to tournaments in the next couple of weeks. So we'll coordinate uh, during that time. That way, they're not at home uh, playing uh, so we can construct so those these two. are made out of steel instead of... Galvanized, heavy-duty uh, material, <laughs> pre-engineered, so they'll be instead state of, of the art. Just like our, our grandstand bleachers at Rio High School, but in a smaller scale. It's not like they're, they're not going to have cloth like the other ones. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Any further discussion required? Pending the pending uh, lawsuit against the company. I knew I was going to say that because I knew Pope was going to ask. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's on Mr. <coughs> right. We've, that we've, we've placed both the manufacturer and also the uh, local vendor on notice already. We have not gotten a response from either one, so I'll be bringing back bringing that to the board by next month for action. Uh, limitations on this one would be two years. Yeah. I think so. We it's would it, well, probably GTPA. Be a four year. Well, it's four not year, GTP, yeah, this is contract. The contract, yeah. So you can okay. Four year statute, but we're okay. well within the, the okay. statute. Yeah. And, and they gave us a 
I forgot what it was. It'd be good if we could have DPA as yeah. a school. Yes, on the materials. Yes. On the materials. It, it, it's on the contract, yep. on their purchase order, on our request. So it's you a 15-year warranty. But they made a lot of representation, so you got to add the contractual with the DTPA yeah. tie-in clauses statute. you got to throw it in there. I guess what we're saying, Mr. Uh, is make sure you have everything ready to go for a Go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get right. that money back. Uh, there was a motion by Mr. Varela, was seconded by Mr. Castillo. All those in favor, uh, sign so signified by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Item 31, discussion, consideration, and possible action to hire an engineer for athletic department construction projects. I move that we approve item 31 as presented in our board packet. There's a motion by Mr. Varela. Is there a second to that motion? I second that motion. A second by Mr. Pena. Any discussion required? All right, there being none. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Item 32, discussion, consideration, and possible action on the sale of delinquent tax property. I know we have Mr. Gonzalez from Blindberger here to answer any questions we may have, or do you want to go ahead and present, Mr. Gonzalez? Okay. Yes, because I'm not sure we have the information necessary. I, I don't remember ever the Kalam line Barker asking permission to sell property. What's different on this one? Could I it's like unusual, one, no? It's a very unusual yeah. case. And good evening, everybody. To the Osage line Barker. Um, we're authorized the district to sell property. Uh, they need a judgment on in our tax sales. And most of our sales are done in public auction. And it's done because it maximizes profit to the district and it's, it's transparency to the board and to the public. For example, if it's I mean, I can't buy property, but let's say one of your cousins or something, we go to the highest bidder. It's an auction process. We do do private auctions rarely, mostly when, when entities want to buy property for a park or for a water, this water uh, tower, things like that. There's also specific instances when we consider hardship cases, and that's what occurred in this particular event. So what happened in this event, just to give you some background, um, we, we, we initiated a lawsuit uh, on this individual, I don't want to give her name, but on this individual, and there was no contact by her. We are letters, we are knocking on her on her door, nothing at all. Um, after many years, we initiated a lawsuit, we took judgment. Two or three years after judgment, still with no contact, we put the property up for sale. We had people that go out to these properties to put signs and inspect. The property was in such disrepair, we marked it as abandoned. Nobody came to the door. The yard wasn't maintained. Um, the property wasn't sold, so it was struck off to all the entities. Later on, it's been many years later, we tried to put it back to resale. It was still not sold because the amount of the value of the property or the taxes was so high. We then got a call from this woman's brother-in-law. She proceeded to tell us that the woman had severe mental disabilities she was a shut into the house and never answered the door. Um, she was over 60 years of age. And those are certain things that if we would have known that prior, we would never initiate a lawsuit because the law states we can't, someone who's disabled, for example. So trying to figure out what we could do, the value of taxes owed, and I don't know if it's in your packet, but I, I can tell you quickly, the amount of taxes owed on this particular property um, was... Um, I mean, over $35,000. So the value of the property was $45,000. So it was a little bit more there. I know they're equal, equal. So there was no way for this woman to pay the property at all. So we ran the risk that if we put it to sale, <coughs> first of all, it would have, we would go to the, the, the highest bidder. We would start going down in our bidding process. So someone says, I'll buy it for $10,000, and then we start going up. It could have been bought by any individual. That would have necessitated them the possibility of kicking this woman out where she becomes displaced from her home. The brother-in-law contacted us. I believe he contacted some people at the board um, saying, what could I do? I have $15,000 to give right now. And I promised if you sell the property to me, I will put $40,000 into repairing the home to make it livable for this woman, his, his uh, sister-in-law, until she passes away, and I'll continue to be up to date and pay all taxes as they go forward. So because of that hardship uh, uh, purpose, I mean, listening to his story and not wanting to displace this woman, 
we are coming here to the board, or I'm coming to the board to present his resolution to approve a private sale to this individual for $15,000. That would net to uh, Rio Grande City Grill ISD $6,399.89. Um, this resolution went yesterday to South Texas College and it was approved yesterday. I'm coming here before um, you gentlemen today to get a resolution approved. Next week I'll be going to Stark County to get them approved. When all of this approved, we'll approve this sale it will go to the brother-in-law name where he will maintain the property for his disabled sister-in-law. And then the, we'll go from there. But it's not something we do very often, if at all, but because of the hardship nature of this case, we decided it was appropriate and, and wanted to bring it forward to the board. So let's say we approve it tonight and one of the other ent entities doesn't want to do it. it. It kind of breaks every, I mean, it stops everything. Correct? It does. All the entities need to approve it. Uh, unanimously so we got one I'm here today on this one and tomorrow next week we're going to Stark County so I'm asking if there's any if there any other questions I'm asking the, the board to approve a resolution is there any way that we can help a little bit more or a legal way that we, we can help the lady I mean at, at this point uh, we can't do anything else because it's already been struck off to the entities when we had it in sale before we even attempted to sale <coughs> to sell it she could have applied um, or what's called an abatement or, the, or a temporary injunction to, to, or to, to stop our sale because she is legally disabled. But because no one ever came forward, it's been struck off to all of you. So Rio Grande City Gruya are now the owners of this property. So, I mean, nothing else you could do but just so, approve a resolution to give it back to us. So we're trying to do at this point, we've been negotiating with this individual to try to maximize um, anything back to, to the district. So, I mean, for example, he could have come with $5,000 or $1,000, but we're like, no, you know what? There's $45,000 owed. You have to come with something a little bit better. We've been working with him for, for at least a year. He was able to come up with the $15,000. So we thought that was something that, was, that he could do, that he wanted to do, that he was able to do. And um, that's the amount we settled on. In your experience, if you were to go to public auction, would you have gotten 15000 for it? I think it would have gone a lot lower. And, I think you already tried, right? That's we, what you said. Well, we tried twice, yeah. and it didn't sell. And in the wor what I'm worried about is that any other person buys that property, and they kick this woman out, and they so take what over are, the land. What are the ramifications of you trying to foreclose on somebody who's not mentally well? Well, they have legal remedies to, to halt our judge, to halt our, our lawsuit. We yeah, but, but, lawsuit. If, if, but if the person's not mentally well, how is she even going to know or he know that... They can stop. These that, can. That, that's what we came in here. I mean, what the issue here is we visit the house three or four times. There's a gate. We can't jump the gate to go knock. So the, <clears> the property, <throat> the grass wasn't, it was weeds. We have pictures of it. You know, since I think I, there was three or four pictures in 2013, the somewhat present. It was, the windows are boarded up. The roof luckily was falling in. I mean, it looked abandoned. So... I'm very thankful this individual came forward, the brother-in-law. If not, it very possibly could have been sold to somebody and they would have found this woman living there. It's a very unique, unfortunate circumstance. And one of the legal ways they, the court does it to protect those individuals is they appoint ad litems. So they can go out there and talk to the individuals and try to locate them. But I'm assuming that the, person had the same experience and couldn't locate her. It was, there was an item appointed on this case and that's you know, the, forward. The, the, proceeding, a, the proceeding would be a guardianship. Well, yeah. well I mean, for, but, they didn't, but, they, but they didn't know that she was disabled. So it's an ad litem first and then a guardianship. Correct. Item. For the tax purposes, in our lawsuit, we didn't, all we're trying to serve, we couldn't serve her. We had an ad litem. The ad litem signed off on our judgment. We went forward. He, didn't know any, they, he just said I couldn't contact her, no, no, no address, no nothing. And they, the judge would sign off on it. Correct. I think my, my concern would be one, obviously, you know, she's, she has an estate, right? So in this particular matter, if we... First of all, I'm assuming we have the discretion, right, to, to approve. Now, even moving forward, I'm, talk, I'm thinking in terms of liability to the board. If her estate later, you know, comes back and for some reason she is appointed an ad litem and they reflect back on this transaction of us approving to a private sale, uh, you know, I guess it would be more of a legal question as to whether or not uh, the board would somehow be liable for making that approval in any way, shape, well, Lion Bargo right. would be like, well, <laughs> I point the, I point it to Jimmy, right? Right, because she has no ad litem, like John points out. I mean, well, she technically well, no they, one's in charge of. She had it, but they couldn't contact. Well, what's, what's going to happen on this case is the private sale goes through the brother-in-law will be now the record owner of this property. Yeah. 
So he'll be the one that has to pay the tax, has to do everything on this property. I mean, he's the one that can sell the property. He's the one that can, can kick her out. I mean, but he, he's, he's asking to be the record owner. Of the so property. he's asked, they were, we're doing it because on property, his request. Because the property belongs to the entities right now, correct? Right. right. And, and, and basically approved. what you're asking is for the entities to sell it to, so they could take care no, of the lady, no, correct? Correct, yes. So the liabilities, they've already happened because we already took the property away, uh, if there's any liability. I mean, right now the liability is to the district. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, the, the entities own this property and you have a woman that's been residing there. Right. So, I mean, I mean, legally, if, if she falls down or something, I mean, it's, it's a property owned by all the entities. That's correct. And, and, and I trust that Lineberger knows what they're doing on this, but the, the key here is that under the statute, they've done everything that they have to do. They put it for sale. They did it twice, it still couldn't. And there is an exception, and this is, again, they're normally hardship cases. This is one, and basically what we're doing as a district, if you approve it, is you're placing this property back on the tax rolls. So it's a benefit for the school district. So the sooner you do that, and it'll come back to the tax roll, not at 15,000, but at whatever the appraisal district is. The, 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 so appra the current appraisal value for this property is 45,000, so the brother-in-law next tax season we'll will be paying taxes on a $45,000 property and he's going to put 40000 into it to repair. to repair it. So I don't know that's going to raise the value of the property, but he has said, I will do that and I will pay all future taxes on this property. It hasn't been on the tax roll um, since 2016. So we hope the family and we it, it benefit. Correct. Mr. President, I call for the question. Let's just take a Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Let me go ahead and there being no further discussion before I call. No. All right. All those in favor? Or did we book? Who called? We haven't been okay. All those, are, yeah, nobody, nobody's asked for the no question, comments. right? Nobody's, nobody's called it yet. All right, so do I have a motion for item 32? Uh, so moved. Okay, second. is there a second? Second, Mr. Castillo. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Thank you so much, Thank Jimmy. You very much. Appreciate Thank it. You, Thank, you. Thank you. The board will now convene an executive of a closed session in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code sections 551. 0.071 through 551.076 and 551.082 through 551.084. The time is 7.51. Okay, we are now reconvened back in open session or section 8. It is 9.23 p.m. On item A, there is no action required. Do I have a motion on item B? Mr. President, I move that we approve item, item B as discussed in executive session. There's a motion by Mr. Variade. Is there a second to that motion? Second the motion. Second by Mr. Pena. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Do I have a motion on item C? Mr. President, move that we approve item C as discussed in executive session. There's a motion by Mr. Varela. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Second by Mr. Castillo. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign, motion carries. Item D, there is no action required. Uh, do I have a motion on item E? Mr. President, I move that we approve item E as discussed in executive session. There's a motion by Mr. Varial. Is there a second to that motion? I second it. Second by Mr. Pena. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign. Motion carries. We have a motion on item F. Mr. President, I move that we approve item F as discussed in ex executive session. There's a motion by Mr. Varial. Is there a second? I second that. Second by Mr. Pena. All those in favor, so signify by raising your right hand. Same sign. Motion carries. Section 9, the meeting is hereby adjourned. It is now 9.24 p.m.